Hi guys, this is Ili here from the Muscular Myotherapy Clinic and this is Bella, Bella Donna. She's going to be showing you how to do excellent hip mobility because she's a Labrador and she's prone to hip dysplasia. So what we're going to be doing is showing all these people that are staying at home or should be staying at home how to do some proper structural great quality hip mobility work on a very basic level today. So all you need is a yoga mat or a Pilates mat or a carpet or if you just want to do it on the floor you're welcome to do so as well. This can be done in your living room or at home. So when you're standing upright or standing on the ground or going for a walk, your center of gravity is generally between the third and the fifth bone or the vertebra of your lower back. But when you're sitting down, generally speaking, your center of gravity lowers even further. When your hips are out of line or out of balance, in particular when you're trying to do certain movements that you're already doing throughout the day. And the pressure around the hips aren't redirected properly when you're doing a particular movement. So having mobile hips is very important for your joint health. The other thing is when your hips are mobile, you're able to express very particular vocabulary of movements that you're trying to do with a little bit more ease. So having pain relief is one thing, but having freedom of movement is a very different thing as well. And can have the possibility of making your day feel a little bit more easier, a little bit different. Your hip is a very mobile joint. It can do many different motions, and because it can do many different motions, it is more prone to injury. So it brings me to the second principle. Generally speaking, in the human body and in the musculoskeletal system, the more stable a joint is, the less mobile it is, like the knee or the elbow. It can only move so many planes of motion. That's why it's less prone to injury in general, from what I've noticed, because of the sacrifice that it has of being able to move a lot less. Your shoulders, on the other hand, and your hips, they're able to do many more different planes and variations of movement that your elbows and your knees can't. But because of that extra range of variations of motions that your hips or your shoulders can do, in this case, the hips, they are more prone to injury. So a lot of my clients, they ask me how to improve the hip mobility. So there are many different mobilizing techniques for your hips, for the different movements that the hips even allow to begin with. So today I'm going to show you a very, very basic structural mobilization that you can hold in a static fashion, meaning you don't have to move around too much once you get into this position and it will improve your mobility in your hips. There are many different ways of improving your hip mobility, uh, but one way to improve hip, hip flexion and external rotation, meaning when your hips can go towards your chest and when your hips can rotate outwards in the where the ball and socket joints in your hips is able to rotate outwards. It can relieve a lot of pressure in your hips that you can build up throughout the day from walking all day or sitting all day or not moving around all day or even exercising. After exercise, when you're strengthening different muscles, they become stronger, but then they become tighter as well, which is fine, but then it's nice to mobilize your joints so that when you start exercising again, your joints and your muscles are supple and relieved enough to be in a position where you can strengthen your muscles with full range of motion in particular again. So if I had to break this movement down on one leg, it would look like this. Billy, you can join me. Show them how it's done. Show them how it's done, Billy. She's just, she's just shy and humble. So hip flexion looks like this. I'm flexing my hip, which means my knee is going towards the direction of my chest. That's hip flexion. Hip external rotation is when my hip, from the ball and socket joint, from the greater trochanter slash the ball and socket joint, when it's rotating outwards, my knee is going outwards because my hip is rotating outwards. First thing I get you to do is get into this position. What the goal is, what I'm trying to mechanically do is I'm trying to lean a little bit back, supporting yourself with your arms over your knees and your hands and fingers on the ground so that you don't fall backwards. My knees are going towards my chest. My knees and hips are being rotated a little bit outwards. So they're not like this. They're coming out a little bit. So my hips are opening up from the ball and socket joint, which is external rotation of the hip. And it's also allowing my knees to go towards my chest, which is hip flexion. So your connective tissue, your connective tissue that surrounds every muscle, ligament, tendon, and even organs and bones and joints in your whole body. It helps with the framework of movement and distribution of pressure and traction around the body. So your 
fascia or the connective tissue, think of it like glad wrap, except there are many different layers of the glad wrap and it can be scrunched up in one position more than it could be in another at times. So what you can do is you can't technically release the fascia, but you can improve its hydration and the glidability because of the hydration between the different layers that even make up the glad wrap or the connective tissue, which surrounds the muscles around the different muscles in the hip. Your fascia takes a longer time to relax compared to your muscles, generally speaking. From this position, you don't have to move too much. It pays to be in this position for a long period of time. You don't have to really force any position. Let's say you start off with being in this position for 30 seconds, then build towards 60 seconds, then two minutes, and then after that you can stay in this position as long as you feel comfortable. Your connective tissue is able to relax a little bit. Your joints are able to circulate a little bit more. Orthopedically, it's very important how you get into a position and how you get out of it so that it's done safely and slowly so that your body can adjust to it in a safe manner. Now, so the next thing that you can do to get to the next progression of this technique, which is still basic, to really, really amplify the hip flexion and the hip external rotation. What I'm now going to do is lean my weight a little bit forward so I don't fall back and get my arms and put them inside inside my shins like that that's the next progression what that's going to do is mobilize and lengthen the different areas in your lower part of your lower back it's going to really flex your hips up back and at the same time it's going to externally rotate them outwards as you can see from here hip flexion and external rotation my hips are coming out and i'm really amplifying it by having my elbows inside the shins like that from this position you can uh, go on Facebook hang out with your friends like this on Instagram or whatever but for the purposes of mobility it's a great thing that you can do and uh, I'll see you next time so if you enjoyed this video click like and subscribe share it with your family and friends and say hi to Bella